champions from the Sleeper Wire Fantasy Football Show will help you win your fantasy football championship. Sleeper Wire, Friday, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern. Sleeper Wire on Dash Talk. Today's show is sponsored by Third and Nevin's Watches, luxury timepieces that embody that old world charm with a modern flair. Make a statement with these high quality, high style, and highly affordable watches. Visit thirdandnevins.com and order today. Welcome, sleepers. The Sleeper Wire Show Halloween Edition. And it's me, Max, joined by yours truly, Professor Chris. Chris, how you doing? Doing great, man. What about you? I'm doing pretty awesome. I mean, football tonight is going to be a great game. I know, folks. If you, you've always know by now the Monday show, the Tuesday shows are recorded on Monday, so we get to watch some football after we work. But tomorrow's Halloween, so this will be on Halloween. That being said. Something that is scary is going to be the first point we make in news and injuries. All right, so Zach Miller, I think this is the scariest thing I saw this past weekend. His knee dislocated on a touchdown. He ma- managed to maintain control of the ball the whole way down. But Chris, you mentioned you saw it. I saw it live as well. Did it disturb you on like several levels? Oh, yeah, it was really gross once you saw the replay especially when it was behind him just i haven't seen a leg break like that since i guess it wasn't broken but a leg move like that since like the kevin ware and paul george injuries where their leg broke it just looked absolutely terrible well it's like when it happened i mentioned you earlier i saw it and i was like oh something really strange happened to his leg a buddy i was watching the game with was like i didn't see anything and then they showed the replay and my friend was just like oh my god Knees aren't supposed to do that, and it's like, yeah, his season's done, 100%. Yeah, yeah, and it was actually the way the camera angle was during real time, during the play, it was kind, it was pretty subtle that something yeah. happened to his leg, but that's, I, I mean, he, he... To me, I saw his leg stick, and I was like, oh, his leg stuck, he probably just tore his ACL. Yep. Because sometimes when your leg's straight, you know, you, that can happen. When it slowed down and you saw the severity of that knee bend... Right. Oh, Yep, pretty bad. Oh. So the injury was actually worse than the doctors thought. He had to undergo vascular surgery, like emergency vascular surgery last night in New Orleans to repair artery damage, like some arteries ripped open. And the surgery was successful, and by successful, I mean that he's not going to lose his leg. Dude. That's what successful means in this case. Not that he might come back and play in a year and a half. Successful as in he's not losing his leg. You know, I do have faith that he'll come. I mean, Zach Miller's hurt a lot, but I do have faith he'll come back on the sole fact that Teddy Bridgewater is believed to come back. Yeah, but Teddy Bridgewater didn't almost lose his leg. Yeah, but Teddy Bridgewater also blew up his entire knee with a grenade. Well, yeah, I know that. (laughs) Like, (laughs) it wasn't good either. They were like, hey, everything came apart. What do you mean everything? Oh, we mean everything. But uh, let's, let's move on. Something a little less scary. So there's a lot of trade rumors with your boy, T.Y. Hilton, and there's even more trade rumors with Frank Gore. Are the Colts in sell now? You're the Colts fan. They're your home team. What do you think? I don't think they need to be in complete sell mode. I don't really agree with them selling T.Y. Hilton because we've seen when him and Luck are in the game how good he is and how good he makes Luck. On the other hand, like with the two teams that are rumored to be interested in trading for Gore— I would be totally okay if they traded him. I think Mac is really starting to emerge, and he's the future at the running back position there anyway. So might as well trade something during his last yeah, last year of his contract, I believe, and get something for him rather than just let it expire. I agree with that. I mean, T.Y., I feel like the Colts always need to have that one like unbelievable receiver on their team. They've had it for the last two decades. There's always someone on that team. Yeah, we had Marvin All-Star. Harrison and then Reggie Wayne and then T.Y. Hilton. Yeah, it, there's, there's always someone. And then... um. Gore, I said it in the preseason, I thought Mac was going to take over. I actually had high hopes for Turbin as well, but obviously with the injury, it's Mac's, it's Mac's spot to lose. Right. That being said, I did give my crazy theory, which is probably going to get us a bad rating, but I'm going to say it anyways. The Colts should trade Andrew Luck, keep T.Y., 
get rid of Luck's massive contract. And I'm not saying Luck's a bad quarterback because I'd be crazy to. But he's hurt so much. They have to pay the man so much money. Jacoby Brissett isn't Andrew Luck caliber, but he's good enough. Rebuild your own line. Roll with Brissett for a few years. Get your team right. Because it's not fair to have a quarterback as good as Luck on a team that bad, especially when you can't actually use the quarterback because he's getting hurt so much because you can't build a team around him. And it's, it's, it sounds like, I don't know, like bad saying that because everyone's like, look, you're the co- never going to leave the Colts. But in my own world, if I was the GM, Luck would be gone, not because I didn't like Luck, not because I didn't think he was great. It's because there's nothing you can do for his career right now. And if I was Luck, when my, next con- when my contract's up, I wouldn't resign. If the team still looks the way it does when his contract's up or if he ever gets back on the field. And I say that because Luck's shoulder, it's sore again. He started to throw the ball, and now there's setbacks, Chris. Does that concern you? Yeah, I don't want him to play at all this season. And, you know, not coming, not approaching this as a fantasy aspect, just as a football fan, the Colts season is pretty much lost at this point. So why bring him back? Even if he's, you know, healthy enough to play, the Colts don't really have anything to play for at this point, And it's only through eight weeks. I mean, having a two and six record basically means you're not making the playoffs. So I hope they don't bring him back until next season. I could agree. And I also hope that this draft class, when they go in there, they only draft offensive linemen in DBs. That's it. That that's what we've been wanting them to do for a few years now. That's dude. That's what I said for the Bears. That's what I said for the Browns. I swear to God, if you're a bad team, just get a good offensive line, and you'll automatically be better. That's just like my personal belief in the NFL. Well, and I do believe that having non Ryan Grigson in there is going to be good. I mean, it was <laughs> going to take more than one year to fix all of the problems on offense and defense that the Colts had. But I think uh, I think he'll be able to do that, hopefully through this next draft. They did address the DB position a little bit last year, taking Malik Hooker in the first round. So that was a good sign. I love the name. I will say, quick tangent, I know you guys hate when I waste time, but talking about O-lines and how crazy I am, you know I'm a Seahawks fan. I actually had a theory that I pitched to one of my friends. If I was the GM of Seattle, which clearly will never, never happen, I would trade Russell Wilson, Bennett, and Richard Sherman. And I would trade Wilson to the Browns. I'd get Miles Garrett. I'd get some old line. I'd get Joe Thomas. I would trade Sherman away for some old lineman. Name one. I'd take him. Bennett, same thing, because that opens up about $150 million in cap space. I'd go sign Kirk Cousins for a $15 million, like a year, five year deal. So you're saving money right there. And my O line would be better. I'd probably go sign a receiver. Pete Carroll is so good at building defenses. I feel like the Seahawks wouldn't skip a beat. So sometimes, in my eyes, it's worth moving the big chips, i.e. Andrew Luck, to rebuild a team and make it better for the future. But that's my little tangent. I will try to stay on track today, Chris. You're a teacher. I know how you are with schedules. (laughs) So Jay Gruden does not think Jordan Reed will play next week. Yep, hamstring issue. Anyone shocked? Gronk has been playing the most I've seen him play in years. Eifert did exactly what I thought he'd do this season by getting hurt, and Eric Ebron is a laughing stock the best tight ends in the league aren't the best tight ends in the league when they well, came ebron the was never one of the best tight ends in the but league. he was always held in the esteem that he could be and i don't I, I don't him. understand why but yeah he was never one of the best like eifert i get it he's got the intangibles like ebron actually has the intangibles he's got the size the speed the build everything you want he just can't get it done which is like another organization that just does stupid stuff like like move on get a new tight end there's plenty out there Devonta Freeman will be limited at practice this week with a minor shoulder issue. Um, seems precautionary, Chris. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. They're already saying he's going to be limited. It's not like it's – I think he's just got to take it easy. Yeah. And uh, Corey Davis was limited at practice Monday. And I feel like if you're limited on Monday, you're going to be fine to play this week unless something crazy happens. Yeah, and this is kind of a big piece of news because for about the last five or six weeks, Corey Davis was ruled out on Tuesday. Six, like, you know, five days before the game is supposed to start. Nope, you're already out this week. So the fact that he's already getting a limited session in, in on Monday is a good sign. All right, let's hop into some week eight game reviews. All right, guys, listen. I know you all love being ahead of the curve, and that's why you listen to the show, to hear the fantasy trends before they happen. 
Well, we just partnered up with a watch brand that is ahead of the curve, Third and Nevins. Timepieces that make statements and can be worn every day to any event. These are clean, modern, sophisticated designs backed by old world craftsmanship. Really great looking watches that'll make people ask, where did you get that watch? The answer is Third and Nevins. The kicker is that most watches of this quality cost $500 or more, but Third and Nevins watches start at just $159. High quality luxury watches at a fraction of the cost. Visit thirdandevans.com today to check out the styles and place an order. This is Sean Merriman, and you're listening to the Sleeper Wire Show. All right, so Thursday night football, Dolphins versus Ravens. I did not get to watch this game due to, again, new job. I hate it. I'm just kidding. I love my job. But the Ravens put the beat down on the Dolphins. Chris, did you watch this game? Yeah, I did, and it was very depressing. Why was it very depressing? Because Matt Moore had always done great things with Kenny Stills, and Moore was a pretty decent quarterback at the end of last season and probably should have been starting over Jay Cutler this year. And I actually streamed him in a league. I still have a shot at winning, but had to stream him in a league, and I thought he would get more than zero touchdowns. Yeah, but Matt Moore's issue and Jay Cutler's issue was the same issue Tannehill's had. They don't have an O-line. And like, I, that's, at some point, you can't just blame it on the O line, though. But at some point, you can. I mean, Mitch Trubisky, he's winning games, but he's not doing anything. The Rams revitalized their O line; they look amazing now. O lines are a lot, especially when a quarterback like Stills, deep threat guy, Landry, quick outs guy, Parker hasn't been playing, so let's not talk about him right now. You need time to get these guys the ball. Um, Deshaun walks, Watson looks like a god because he has all the time he wants. Same with Russell Wilson, like if you watched yesterday's game. Yeah, I'm not going to sit over here and say the offensive line isn't important and it's not a factor, but people were using the same argument about Ryan Tannehill last year, that, oh, it's the offensive line, but Matt Moore was great the last three games of the season. He had that same offensive line. Jay Ajayi uh, is terrible, by the way, so you should trade him while you still can. I don't even know if you can. I don't think you can. If you're going to trade him, you might have to like get a Marlon Mack. Yeah, yeah, and you're not going to want it. A guy you drafted, some people were drafting him in the first round, but I thought it was crazy, but a guy you likely drafted in the second round playing like this, Isaiah Crowell has more fantasy points than Jay Ajayi does this season. Which, well, Isaiah Crowell had a decent game this week, but yeah, it's, it's it's very disappointing, and they're they're quickly going to Damian Williams, too. They're doing what they did to Lamar Miller, where it's like, oh, you don't, you're not working on three carries? Cool, here's the next guy. And some running backs, like Zeke, like uh, Kareem Hunt this year, AP, they need the work to show the progress. But again, O-line issues. Now, on the Ravens, did anyone stand out to you as a major playmaker, someone to look for in free agency? Well, obviously, Alex Collins had a monster game with 18 carries for 113 yards. Yep. But Buck Allen, even though he only had 55 yards, still got the ball 17 times. And he's still a better receiver out of the backfield. Well, Harbaugh so, announced today that... Um, Collins will be getting more work going forward. Yeah, Pagano said that about Marlon Mack, too, and then that didn't happen the next week either. He didn't say he'd get more work. He said he's earned earned more work. Didn't say he was going to give it to him. Uh, I like Collins. I mean, I called Collins like a month ago. Like I premature called him, I will say, because I told people to get him, and it definitely was early. But I like the kid. I think he's got good intangibles. I do agree Buck Allen has better hands. And, you know, it could be a third down back situation for buck where it's like he's gonna be the ppr guy for you you know what i mean but uh let's move on because if you guys watch the game beat down on the ravens your studs are your studs and there aren't many so london game vikings 33 browns 16 did you watch this because i did yes the browns looks good for the first half (laughs) yeah kind (laughs) of it was like like, it was like a competitive game for the first half and i was like they had their they had the lead for a little and I thought the Browns were going to get their first W this year. Yeah, I thought so too, and that really would have surprised me. Didn't they show some stat during the game that the Browns haven't had the lead at halftime since, like, 2015? I honestly don't remember. I was watching Red Zone, but I'm not Red Zone for this. I don't, I don't remember. It was not Okay, even, I think uh, that – I, I would have to vet that. I think that's what they said, but if so, that's pretty crazy. That's like a I, yeah, the only guy I was disappointed with on the Vikings side was Stephon Diggs. I thought he was going to have a you know a Stephon Diggs week, even though I know he was coming back from an injury. The fact that he was playing, I thought was a great sign. But 
really all the guys that I have on my fantasy teams, Thielen, McKinnon, Diggs, and Rudolph, all of them got touchdowns except Diggs. Yeah, it's kind of everyone you expected to do well kind of did well. They the, the Vikings did what you expected them to do you know, right. for the most part. You know what I mean? Um, on the Brown side of the ball, not trying to jump into politics with this, do you think that at this point in the season – because they don't want Kaiser as the quarterback. It's kind of clear that they have no patience for any quarterback in that organization. Do you think at this point in the season, if Colin Kaepernick hadn't announced that he was going to sue the NFL, the Browns would have signed him? No, and honestly, I don't know if this is even <laughs> fair to speculate on. Uh, but no, they had so many quarterbacks, I think they were going to just keep rotating in and out. I don't think they would have had They're just going to hope Kaepernick. for the best. I just want the Browns to like – I thought they had a good draft this year. I was I, I was excited for them. I was like, they didn't trade everything away. Like they weren't stupid. They made good picks. Yeah, they had a hell of a draft. And then the then the, the season starts, and hopefully these guys are just young. Hopefully it's something because I mean it's funny like when you have a when you have a, a team that's kind of the joke of the league. Like that's all funny to laugh at. But you know, as a football fan, like you and I are, you want to see the underdog do well. And the Browns have been the true underdog for so long that you're like, come on, just break through the ceiling. Just do something. And I think the organization's taking a step in the right direction. But as of now, don't touch anyone on the Browns. Duke Johnson's only relevant in PPR if you think it's going to be a blowout. And Isaiah Crowell, even though he showed life this week, is still not a viable fantasy option. Do you agree, Chris? I think Crowell is you can pick him up because he's probably on a lot of waiver wires. Oh, yeah. I would pick him up if he's available, but just to see what he's going to do the next game. So, I am you know, he still only had 11 carries for 64 yards, but he did break off a 26-yard touchdown. That's where, you know, a good chunk of his fantasy production came from. Let's not dwell on the Browns because it's making me sad. Chargers and Patriots, this was a good game. I enjoyed watching this game thoroughly. Chris, let's get your thoughts before I ramble on. You know, my thoughts on the game. Melvin Gordon, once again, is an absolute stud, and I am so glad that I drafted him so, you know, as often as I did. Uh, But the Patriots weren't as – they didn't score as many points as I thought they would on the Chargers. No. Well, the Chargers put up a good defense last week, too. Yeah, absolutely. And um, Hogan looking hurt. So Amendola is a definite add then with Hogan being on the mend. Well, yeah, if Amendola's even available, he should be owned in every league. Some people, in a few, I can't say some. In a few leagues I'm in, Amendola was dropped once Hogan kind of emerged as that number two to Cooks. That being Danny said... Amendola, by the way, is 64% owned in Yahoo leagues. That's not even enough. Nope, should be 100%. Oh, well, I would, I mean, if you're in an 18 league, no. But if you're in a 10 team or more, yes, 100% owned. Because... Have him on your bench. He's the guy you want when Hogan goes down. That's why you get Amendola, because he's going to put up nice wide receiver two numbers, especially in PPR. Bears and Saints, Mitch Trubisky couldn't get it done. Jordan Howard still looking like a stud. Mark Ingram fumbled. Those are my highlights. Yeah, he got, dude, him and uh, Peyton got into a yelling match on the sideline. Yeah, do you think that means next week it's going to be an Alvin Kamara kind of week and not an Ingram week? It better be. Kamara's, Kamara? I will give Hoos the credit on that one. I did not buy it when I first saw it, but that kid is the truth. He looks really good. Yeah, there, there's no way around that. He looks fantastic. Now, Willie Sneed did nothing. Does that concern oh, you? Yes, that's super disappointing. I I think he was only in for seven snaps the now, entire is, game. Are they giving any reason why? Because I drafted him, and like late, obviously, and I held on to him for a while. You know, I'm not putting him in, but it's like next week I have Keenan Allen on a bye, and if I don't get a trade through, I'm kind of screwed. And it's like, come on, Willie Sneed, like, please just be Willie Sneed again. Be, do what Will Fuller's doing. Yes, you know what I, mean? I would absolutely love that. Well, that's kind of so what I, I feel yeah. like people expected them to be similar this year. I thought Willie Sneed was going to be great, but I think at this point he is most likely droppable. You probably have better options, right, at least for the foreseeable future. Can you give us – all right, let's play a quick game. Um, I don't want to say – Brandon Coleman or Willie Sneed, same team. Oh, who would I – if they were both there, I would take Sneed. All right. Um, obviously, Amendola over Sneed. Brandon LaFell or Sneed? Sneed. Mm, Ted, Ted Ginner Sneed. Ginn. Ginn, yeah. Uh, Ellington or Sneed? Ellington As for Houston. Bruce Ellington? Yeah. Oh, Sneed. <laughs> Eli Rogers. Sneed. 
Trey McBride for the Bears or Willie Sneed? Sneed. Trey McBride looks like he has a nice connection connection with uh, Trubisky. Even yeah, it's though been, it's been a game. Can't do stuff. It's been a game. Yeah. All right. So essentially, this, for the Saints moving forward, your studs are your studs. Be wary of Ingram. Yeah, I mean, you can't bench Mark Ingram after he. I mean, he still had a great performance. I don't think you can really bench him and feel good about that, especially after what he's been doing for the last couple weeks. He's got the Bucks this week, so I don't think they're going to take him out against a bad defense like Tampa Bay. Yeah, but I mean, yelling at your coach usually doesn't doesn't fare too well for you unless you're on Seattle. Yeah, well, I mean, I would st- you still have to play him, I think. <laughs> no, I understand. Talk so, about his attitude all you want, but you still have to play him in fantasy. See, that's the rough thing with like players like that, where you're not comfortable starring them, but you kind of like, kind of meet with Keenan Allen. I wasn't necessarily comfortable starting him against the Pats because the Pats do have an okay secondary and they've done pretty well against the Chargers throughout history. It's, but I had to start Keenan Allen because it's Keenan Allen. I wasn't like over the hill confident in him, but I had to start him this week. I have Kareem Hunt against Denver. It's like, uh, I got to start you because you're Kareem Hunt and you're killing it. But Denver's run defense. Yeah, Plus, they've been great. Yeah, they've been amazing. Yep. So the Panthers versus the Bucks. Panthers didn't look that great, but they uh, put a beat down on the Bucks, seventeen to three. My biggest question for you: Do you trust anyone on Tampa Bay going forward? Well, Mike Evans, but he didn't do anything. Five for sixty is not a terrible game. No, not a Mike Evans game, though. Well, no, but Mike Evans isn't going to have a Mike Evans game every single week. But you still have to play the guy. You still start Mike Evans every week. Oh, well, what about uh, Doug Martin? I'm still playing Doug Martin every week. He still had 18 carries, 71 yards. Is It's a modest game, but, you know, the Panthers have a pretty decent run defense. I'm oh, still Pan- playing. The, the Panthers are a stout defense. It's just I wanted, I've been wanting to see the Bucks break out. What Deshaun Watson's doing this year is what I thought Winston was going to do this year. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I'm just not seeing it, and it's kind of – I keep saying it's bum me out. The Browns bum me out. The Dolphins are bum me out, but – the Bucks, they have the talent. Their defense looks really good. I know they let up 17 points, but it looks good. But that offense, do you think it's just another team with a bad O-line? I mean, their O-line's not, like, certainly not great, but I still think Doug Martin is a viable star, as lo- and Jameis Winston, too, as long as he's healthy. I mean, they've got New Orleans, the Jets, and then the Dolphins the next three weeks. So those are three pretty good matchups. Jets could be a trap game for your pickups. Every game could be a tra- <laughs> trap game. This is true. Look at the Colts and Bengals, 23-24. to 24. Right, right. Jacoby Brissett, why is he looking like Tony Romo out there in the fourth? I don't know. He's still making dumb mistakes, though, on fourth down. Do you think it's just because he's young, something to grow out of? Well, yeah, it's got to be. The inexperience there. He. It seems like Brissett does not lose games for the first three quarters. Like, he's one of those quarterbacks like how Alex Smith, like, never won you games, but he didn't lose them for you either. Like, well, until this year, obviously. Brissett's like that for three quarters, where he doesn't lose the game for the first three quarters, and then he just makes dumb mistakes in the fourth quarter that lose the game. Yeah, that's why I said he's the Tony Romo. The winning, winning, winning. You just don't throw a pick, you throw a pick. And um, I don't know. So when the Colts, you know, eventually get rid of Andrew Luck and keep Brissett because he's so much cheaper, are you confident in that going forward for the rest of, the, uh, the rest of his career? No, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen? No. All right. What do you mean? Even if the Colts do trade Andrew Luck, I would be surprised if they continue with Jacoby Brissett. I mean, he's a decent little quarterback. He definitely is having growing pains, but that's kind of to be expected from all young quarterbacks. Yeah, that's not what we Watson. expect here in Indianapolis, though. What do you expect? Your quarterback just to get hurt and you pay him tons and tons of money to sit in the no, sidelines? Of course not. Would you quit <laughs> focusing on the fact that he's injured? <laughs> no, we're used to great quarterback play. No, it is very true. The Colts have been very spoiled, kind of like New England fans. Right, yeah. We don't want to go through the whole picks. process of, oh, ride Trubisky for a couple of years. Like, no, we've we've become accustomed to great play at the quarterback position, and I don't really want to compromise that. Yeah. So, Jack Doyle looking like an absolute beast in the receiving game. Yeah, so a week after almost having two fumbles and dropping like 32 passes in one game. And honestly, I think he's the biggest takeaway from the indie side. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because everyone else was pretty quiet. Mac, you know, he was 3 for 36 through the air, which was nice. Got a touchdown. On the ground, Gore was 16 for 82, which actually is really nice. Mac That's didn't, a great game. Yeah, Mac didn't impress on the ground, but 
2.5 as a spellback. I mean, I want to see better production, but through the air, he's looking really good. On the Cincinnati side of the ball, Mixon was looking very bad. Yeah, what's, he was he was pretty going terrible on? running the ball. Because I'm not, like, yeah, through the air, looked fit, like 3 for 91, awesome. But as a running back, I mean, like, the air game is usually Gio Bernard's thing. But Yeah, Mixon, and I think they're going to transition that to Joe Mixon. You think Mixon and then Hill's going to be the running back still, like the main, like, down the, between the tackles guy? No, no, no. I think Mixon's going to take over both roles, and you'll see Hill and Bernard. They'll still get some snaps, but they'll sort of get faded a little bit back. Because Joe Mixon, he was already, like, he led in rushing attempts by, I mean, he only had 11, but still the next closest was Jeremy Hill with four. And he was obviously great in the passing game as well. Three catches for 91 yards. The three catches were great, but, like, 11 for 18 for Mixon or four for 11 for Jeremy Hill. So, I mean, Jeremy Hill definitely is the better running back. But Mixon, I mean, he had a great game. Uh, Croft still looked good for you if you have him at tight end, especially in PPR. They love their tight ends over there. LaFell had a decent game. Green was kind of quiet, but he did save his day with a touchdown. So, yep. you know, not bad. I mean, Cincinnati's kind of turned their season around. So Yeah, they still have a decent chance to make the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, it was one of those things where you, everyone, when the season started, was like, what's going on? Like, we didn't expect this. And now it's kind of like, all right, this is the team we kind of expected to see. Now we got the Raiders versus the Bills. The Bills, the organization that wants to lose, but the players do not. I have a question for you, Chris. I was super high on Derek Carr. Why am I so wrong? I don't think you were so wrong. I mean, he, he's had a couple good games. He was injured for uh, for one of them, and I think he's still trying to work through that injury. But he still threw 313 yards. The Bills just have a good defense. Yeah, the that's this thing. It's like the Bills, like LaShawn McCoy hasn't lost a step. Tyrod Taylor, he only threw for 165 yards, but he was 20 of 27. That's a great passing game. I mean, he had six rush attempts for a yard and a touchdown. So if you started Tyrod Taylor or, or McCoy, you're having a great game. This uh, Andre Holmes from um, Oakland, is he someone you're looking to own for the Bills? No, not really. All right. What about Zay Jones, who had three catches for 32? Nope. <laughs> no. The only, actually, the only wide receiver I would own from the Bills is Jordan Matthews. I still like him. The potential's there. I liked him a lot when he was on when he was on the Eagles, and I was kind of shocked when they got rid of him. But Aguilar's stepped up. I'm sure we'll cover that more when we're on their game. So the running game for Washington or for Washington for Oakland really couldn't get established. Do you think that's also a factor in why they're kind of getting killed because they can't run play actions like the. the Defense just knows they need to pass to get anything done. Well, yeah, and I don't really know if this was the running back's fault very much because they only ran the ball. And I guess if you include the Amari Cooper uh, running play, they only ran the ball 14 times, which is not very, you know, not very many times. I think game script had a lot to do with that because the Bills jumped out to an early lead and just kept building that lead until the very end. So I think this was more just a product of the game script. I do think that we were right on the call that Washington and Richard were basically going to get 50% of the work each. Yeah. Uh, so six carries and five carries. DeAndre Washington looked great through the passing game where I expected Richard to actually shine. I couldn't agree with that statement more. I thought Richard going into it was going to be the better PPR option, and I was vastly wrong. And wrong in the fact that Richard and PPR – just PPR numbers alone, not counting rushes, still got you eight and a half points. He had five receptions for 35 yards. But going eight for 62 with a touchdown, that's great for a wide receiver. Yep. Not to mention the, the extra three points he got you as a running back, roughly. Right, back. right. And I don't think you can rely on either one of these guys moving forward once Marshawn's back from his suspension. Oh, definitely not. But, I mean, it is nice to see Amari Cooper still getting five catches for 48 Crabtree still looking like the number one there. I mean, that's established. Jared Cook looking good for a little tight end if you need a flyer. Definitely not going to be a bad ad for you. Now let's move on to the 49ers and Eagles. I think this game went pretty much as expected. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> absolutely right. I mean, I, I feel bad saying that, but I think it went the way you thought. Like, Bethard for the 49ers, I feel bad. Guy threw, threw, threw two picks. 17 of 36 for 167 yards, one touchdown. That's it, it's a team that was just vastly, vastly out talented. 
The oh, 49ers, yeah, for sure. the 49ers are in full teardown mode. Um, there really isn't anyone on that team that I would want to own. Maybe Carlos Hyde and just pray to God he gets traded. You know, I have actually been holding on to Matt Breda in a bunch of leagues because Hyde hasn't made it through a full season in a long time. If ever, I'm actually not sure if he's played a full 16 games. Uh, but so since he usually gets banged up, I've been keeping Matt Breda for a few weeks and he's been looking great. He had a great game on on Sunday. I mean, he had a great game because the receiving game saved him with the touchdown. But um, yeah. On the Eagles side of the ball, Alshon finally doing something, uh, looking really Ooh. good. Two for 62 with a touchdown. Looking great. Getting hit by a pitch out there, too, which was kind of funny. Zach Ertz, four for 34 with a touchdown. I mean, I feel like Ertz gets the touchdown every week now. And if he doesn't, he gets like six for 90. Yeah, like he just gets a million yards. So if you own Eagles players, Nelson Aguilar, only five points in PPR or five and a half points PPR, but I do like Aguilar going forward. Um, Look at Blount putting in work. 16 for 48. It's not the best on a rushing average, but, you know, three yards per carry. Got a touchdown, so that was nice to you. Clement, 10 for 54. Long of 22, but still looks nice. Still a backfield I would, for the majority, avoid. Did Wendell Smallwood get injured? I don't know if he got injured. I do know that Corey he- Clement got nine more carries than Smallwood, and I was shocked about that. I don't know if he got injured. Yeah, I didn't see an alert about it. I don't think he did either. But, yeah, 10 rushes to one attempt for – we're talking about Clement to Smallwood. I, that was pretty crazy. Well, the Eagles are in the weird and good spot right now where they don't have to commit to any running back. You know what I mean? They don't have that guy right now, so they can test the waters with whoever they want. Yeah, they haven't had that guy since DeMarco Murray was there. And DeMarco Murray wasn't even that guy. Sproles was – so yeah, very true. And, and Ryan Matthews, too. Yeah, their best running back right now is LeGarrette Blunt. If I was to own any, it would be him, and that would be solely for a non-PPR league. Like a yeah, standard, I'm, I'm, look, I'm looking for the touchdown because yep, that's what that's what he's going to do for you. Yep. So moving on to the Falcons and Jets. I like the Jets this year, man. Their record doesn't show it, but they're hanging out in every game. They're hanging around. Yeah, I was surprised if they were going to get one win this season. I thought they were going to be the worst team in the league. Well, it's funny because, like, they're hanging around, but, like, they oh, the, their record isn't good. It's a losing record. But they're not getting killed. Like, they're right. losing stupid games, like 25 to 20, like this week's game. Matt Ryan was 18 for 29, 254, two passing touchdowns. Tevin Coleman was a leading rusher, 14 carries for 82 yards. I mean, he did a 52-yard rush, which would definitely boost the stats. Freeman, 12 for 41, but working with that shoulder injury, should be fine by next week. Mohamed Sanu, 6 for 74 and a touchdown. Yeah, we recommended Sanu a lot on the Blitz this Sunday. I almost added him before the game. I was in, in our Secret Wire League, actually, and I ended up adding Robbie Anderson instead. So it didn't work out. It didn't hurt me that I didn't get Sanu, but it would have been nice to have him because I like him moving forward. Julio Jones, 3 for 74. I mean, if he had a touchdown, that's a that's your basic Julio Jones every week game. That's what you're looking for. Great game from him. Hooper looked really nice, 4 for 47 with a touchdown. Tevin Coleman adding a catch to his already great running day, so he broke 100 yards for you. I think the Falcons are doing, short of Freeman kind of having a bad game, the Falcons are doing what you expect them to do with the players you expect them to use. Sounds very basic, but it's pretty straightforward. If you drafted a Falcons player, if you have one on your team, it's one of the guys we just listed off, and you're going to start them. Unless it's yeah. your tight end. Well, and you you're not to. starting Austin Hooper. I'd start Hooper. I would not. I still don't like him. I, I yeah, he, he got a touchdown, but I still don't like Austin Hooper. I don't think he's worth owning. I mean, to each their own. It, it's all personal preference with tight ends because I don't believe that they should. Tight ends, to me, are kind of like kickers to some people where I don't expect more than like six points from a tight end any given week ever, and that's in like a PPR. So I don't really care who my tight end is for the most part. Like I want a starter, but I don't. Like, I'm rolling with Hunter Henry. I got him off waiver wire, and I like him. I got well, him Hooper's, off had, Hooper's had fewer than three points uh, three times this season. That's not a guy I want to rely on. Well, Jason Witten's had bad games, too, and you can still throw Jason Witten out there every week. You're in a walk. Yeah, but Jason Witten doesn't have as many bad games. Yeah. No, I, 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 I can see it. So on the Jets' side of the ball, McCown, 26 for 33, 257, two touchdowns. He had a really good game. I thought he looked great in the pouring, pouring rain. Uh, Powell, 14 for 33, not that impressive. Forte, can you drop Forte at this point? 
I think I would still rather have Forte than Powell. Really? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't really own any shares of any Jets running back, but I still think Forte is better. Well, there are people who do. In in the passing game, that's kind of Powell's thing. I mean, I know Forte was 6 for 45, and Powell was only 3 for 28 in the passing game, but I don't know. I just feel like Powell offers offers the more rounded player right now in their careers. I don't know. I mean, Forte is still great in the passing game. Yeah, you know, I'm not saying he's not. I just feel like that's kind of Powell's thing, though. Um, Robbie Anderson, six for 104 in a touchdown. Is he an ad? Yeah, I think so. And we're actually, I'm not going to go into Robbie Anderson because he is one of the targets on this week's waiver wire great debate. Oh, great. So I have to change my waiver wire pickup for this discussion. Sure. Nice. All right. Austin's very Jenkins, five for 28. Disappointing there, but I mean, He's a great tight end. He's targeted a bunch. Just hope for better production next week. Curse, only 2 for 14. Curly, 1 for 7. So, I mean, this game kind of went how you expect it to go. You start your studs. Powell and Forte were split. If you have to start them, and you can go either way. Anderson, listen to the debate. Chris does a great job. That's his brainchild. He's a teacher. He knows what he's doing. Texans versus Seahawks. This game genuinely stressed me out as a Seahawks fan. I do not like when the Seahawks get into aerial battles with great defenses, but neither of these defenses looked good this week. What happened, Chris? Do you think this was just like two offenses that just turned it on? or? Yeah, that had to be what it was. I mean, both of these defenses, like you said, are really good. And Seattle, in Seattle, is like historically one of the best defenses at home. And, you know, maybe still one of the, one of the greats and probably the best in the NFL. But it looked like they just stayed at home. Both teams were able to do whatever they wanted to the other team. I mean, the one thing that did save Seattle was their defense with what with um, them picking up Watson three times. But it didn't help that he threw four touchdowns. Right. Like Watson, 19 for 30. So, like, his over, overall QBR isn't that great. But he looks – if I was going to start a franchise tomorrow, I'd want Watson. You know what I mean? He is, oh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Would you say Watson or Wentz? Who would you want? Oh, that's so tough. Because I know you're a huge Wentz fan. I am a huge Wentz fan. But see, Wentz has turnover issues, too. I, you can almost guarantee he's throwing a pick a game. I think I would go Wentz. I, dude, I don't know, actually. <laughs> I think I'd go Wentz because I would trust Wentz more when it came down to the wire. You know what I mean? I feel like Watson, athletic freak makes more bad decisions than Wentz does. And that could just be, you know, Wentz is another year in the league. Watson could be there next year. So that's a really tough decision for me. Has Will Fuller worked his way into must start no matter what? Yeah, 100%. Would you be looking to move him? I'd be looking to get him. So you're trying to trade for Will Fuller. Will Fuller, dude, he gets, he gets targeted so much. It's actually crazy. And Houston's shown one thing this year. They're not a team that slows down. They don't care. They're going to be up 40 points on you. They're still going to try to get a touchdown. I don't know. You say he gets targeted so much, but I mean, Five. he's only got 22 on the season. Yeah, and he missed four games. Oh, you're right. It was uh, three, but yeah, you're right. The fourth one was a bye. Sorry. Well, still. So you're out four games. It's week eight, so you only played four games and you have 22 targets. That's a, 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 that's a fair amount. Hopkins had eight for 224 and a touchdown because he's an animal. Fuller was 5 for 125 with two touchdowns. Miller was 3 for 19. You know, looking at these receiving stat lines, you would question whether Seattle's secondary was even there. But then you look, and they had three picks. This game was just crazy. It was it was insane. Yeah, back and forth, back and forth shootout. Now, is Foreman hurt, or, like, what's going on? Because Miller got 21 carries, only 54 yards, which isn't the best, but, you know, Seattle has a good run defense. Did get a touchdown. Did some work through the air, but Alfred Blue was the backup. Yeah, I don't think Foreman's hurt. He just had one snap and zero carries this week. Very strange. I mean, maybe they're trying to boost Miller's confidence again. Try to yeah, show. Him. I don't know. Maybe uh, just Foreman's not as good as the other guys. You don't think so? Not as good as Miller. I don't think he's as good as Miller. I think the potential's there, but I think he runs dumb. If that makes sense. Yeah, I I mean, he's probably better than Alfred Blue, but Lamar Miller's definitely their best back. It's good to see him getting 21 carries. Yeah. Alfred Blue, though, is a very good blocker. So I could see maybe that's why he was in there, because I I do think he's got a big body and he's good at blocking, and that's why he's still on the Texans. Yep. 
So Russell Wilson was 26 for 41, four touchdowns, one interception. He ran the ball a bunch, four for 30 yards. He was their best rusher. No one on the backfield of Seattle should be owned at this point. Yeah, Lacey and Rawls, between the two of them, had 12 carries for negative one yards. Yeah, it, it's just... <laughs> Yeah, it's just a dumpster fire there. Well, I can't even blame the running backs. It's the like I've always I've talked crap about Lacey. I like Lacey. I talk crap about him. Don't like Rawls. But the O line is terrible on rush. For some reason, they can block for Russell Wilson. I know he helps out with his legs, but there is no run blocking there. Tyler Lockett six for one twenty one. Please don't think this is an every week thing. This is not Tyler Lockett's mo. <laughs> it was just a very good game. Paul Richardson, though, I do think is going to emerge as the true number two for Seattle. He's getting open. He's making plays. Six for 105, two touchdowns, and he earned every single one. Yeah, you know what? I think he's already worked his way into the wide receiver two spot there. Yeah. Um, Doug Baldwin making some crazy catches. It's only six for 54, but he's a, I think he's in every start now, especially in PPR, every week start. Jimmy Graham looking good, four for 39, two touchdowns. Great yeah, big day. A yeah, huge day for him. And Blair Walsh looking all right. Yeah, if you need a kicker. Um, besides that, Seattle, start your starters. Very simple. We say this all the time. Don't get cute with it. Uh, as far as the running backs go, sorry. Yeah, none of them are even ownable. Yeah, like they're really not. You can That's, just drop every single yeah, one of those. Kind of, kind of sad to say, but that's kind of how it is. All right, so we got the Cowboys versus Washington. I was excited for this game. I only watched half of it because I had to go to bed because I'm a child and need eight hours of sleep. But I liked what I saw from Elliot, but I won't talk about Elliot. Yeah, so. I mean, how could you not like what you saw? 33 <laughs> for 150 and two 33 touchdowns. 33 for 150, two touchdowns. Yeah. yeah, he had a good day. I liked what I saw from him. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think he's really emerging as a good running back. Des Bryant, four for 39. Williams, two for 36. Witten, three for 31. You know, this makes it look like to me – the Cowboys run through Elliott. Dak Prescott is an overrated quarterback. He was 14 for 22 for 143 yards. I feel yeah, like not, not a great day for him. People hype him so much. And on the other side of the ball, you have Kirk Cousins, 26 for 39, 263, a touchdown, a pick. You know, Kirk Cousins is a better quarterback than Dak Prescott on a worse team. I feel well, like wasn't wasn't this game played in the rain too? I feel like every game yesterday was played in the rain, unless you were in the dome. Right, but I think that you can kind of give both Prescott and Cousins. Oh yeah, a I, can, I, can, I can cut him a break. I just I feel like the better quarterback is Cousins. That I just want to say that Robert Kelly eight for nineteen touchdown. Chris Thompson four for eighteen. This is all rushing. Crowder two for twelve. Cousins one for zero. Crowder nine for one hundred and twenty three. Hell yeah, loved Crowder this off season. And Chris Thompson eight for seventy six. Yeah, Look. another big day for him through the receiving game. Josh Doxson, one for one for one. One catch, one yard, one touchdown. Yep, 7.1 points. <laughs> now, do you start Grant or do you start Josh Doxson next week? Grant was 5 for 38. I'd still play Doxson over Grant. Just because the talent's there? Yeah, I think so. All right. I mean, I feel like I keep saying this, and it's like, where's the words of wisdom? To start your starters. The only real question I have for this game is Reed might be out next week. Listen to Thursday's show for the updates on that. We'll definitely get to you on Sleeper Wire or Sleeper Bot and Twitter if Reed's out. And Fantasy Life app. And Fantasy Life app. I am sorry about that, Fantasy Life app. Love you guys. Um, besides saying start your starters and kind of avoid Washington's backfield unless it's Chris Thompson and PPR, is there anything else to say with games like this? Where it's kind of like these teams are both decent. You know what you're going to get. If you have Dez, you kind of got to start Dez. If you have Cole Beasley in a PPR, you might want to start him. He's not looking too great, but you might want to. You're, you're yeah, always going to still elite. Yeah, Dez is still Dez. Like that's a that's he's still he's a wide receiver two now in my eyes, wide receiver two. But he has the potential to be a wide receiver one any given Sunday. It's just the production isn't there yet. Um, I've been touting Jamison Crowder all season, so I'd say start him every week. Doxson, the talent is there. He's an amazingly gifted athlete. He just needs to kind of expand with the skill set and stay healthy, and he'll be fine. And, um, yeah, that's basically it. Start Prescott, start Cousins. Pittsburgh in Detroit. I only got yeah. one thing to say. The Sunday night game. Juju Smith-Schuster. 
Oh, yeah. Not only is he the youngest player in the NFL, he has the best name, and he went off. Seven for 193 and a touchdown. Martavius Bryant, thank you for deleting your tweet about how Juju's good, but you're better. Because Juju's really good. Antonio Brown, yeah. five for 70. James, four, two for 42. Le'Veon Bell, 25 carries, 76 yards and a tutty. And I cut you off, Chris. What were you going to say? I was going to actually say, before you moved on from Juju, I was going to say that I did not have anything to add to that because he's the other player in the great debate. So we're doing Juju Smith-Schuster versus Robbie Anderson this week. So go no, check that Juju out. No, Juju Smith wins, dude. Have you heard his name? Well, yeah, but if you know you were able to play guys based on names, then you would have Ian Nacho on your IDP league every single year. Matthew Stafford, 27 for 45, 423 yards, didn't throw a single touchdown. Right. How does someone throw 423 yards and not throw a touchdown? It's called your team is bad. You're good, but your team is bad. Well, the wide receivers are great. Yeah, but I don't. I don't know. I don't know this. I don't know. Like, I, do, I don't know. It's crazy. Like the uh, Lions work, work should on red be zone better. Offense. Work on the red zone offense. That's all I can say. Amir Abdullah is still struggling. They still need that premier back. We all want Amir to do it. We're holding out for you, buddy. Let's ride that train. Theo Riddick, 4 for 21. Marvin Jones, 6 for... Holy shit, we got breaking news. We got breaking news. We have breaking news. 49ers are trading a 2018 second-round draft pick to the Patriots for Jimmy Garoppolo. Oh... I don't know if I like this because Jimmy Garoppolo could be sick for them or he could be bad because we only saw him play six quarters of football. Let's not well, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and speculate on this since it is breaking. Does this make you want any – does you like George Kittle more? I don't know. I think Pierre Garçon is probably I think Pierre most Garçon just got, a bo- just got a major bump. Goodwin just got a boost because um, in the six quarters we saw from Garoppolo, he does not mind throwing deep. The 49ers just made a move to make their team better. Shanahan has a quarterback he can work with. Brian Hoyer's been cut again. I, that's not official, but it's he hasn't been happen. cut. He's been benched. Yeah, he's gonna get cut. It's Brian Hoyer. He'll end up. He'll end up somewhere. Wow. All right. Yeah. Jimmy Garoppolo. Big, big all the 49ers. The Browns. Where were you? Huh? You missed out, you idiots. Do you think he's gonna start next game? Oh, yes. That's what I was thinking too. <laughs> Yes. I All mean, right. unless they get him, immediately <laughs> throw a contract at him and then bench him the rest of the season to save him, which, you know, that they could do. I don't see why you would. Yeah, I don't know. You got your news. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's pretty breaking news, though, right there. That was great breaking news. Thank you, Sleeper yeah. Bot. Guys, if you don't have Sleeper Bot yet, download it. And so. Fantasy Life also sent that, too. Anyway, so it was great to see Golden Tate get back and, you know, recover very, very fast. I didn't expect him to be back for at least another week or two. Yeah, I, I didn't think he was coming back. Uh, seven for 86. Looking right. Good. Marvin yeah, I, I, I had a dilemma last or on Sunday night at about 8 o'clock. And I needed, I had the, I was down by 24, like 23 and a half. I had the Chiefs kicker, and I was trying to decide, do I go Golden Tate or Juju? Ooh. uh And at the very last minute, I put Juju in. It turned out great, obviously. Golden Tate still got me 15.6 points since it's a PPR, so I would only need three field goals from a kicker, but it was good to have that security, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, unless he misses... 20 field goals, I'm going to win. <laughs> well, I had a similar situation. I had Emmanuel Sanders, and this is Sunday morning, and I was kind of like, I don't know if he's going to play. I don't I don't think he's going to play. I'm not confident in, in uh, Fowler. So I picked up TJ Jones. Good play. Thinking Golden Tate would be out. And when I saw Golden Tate take the field, my heart sank. Because <laughs> yeah, by that point, by that point, Sanders was like going to be out officially. So, like I said, when when I saw Golden Tate take the field, I was like, oh, God, no. But Jones, four for 88. He's definitely a streamer guy. If someone gets hurt, then you throw him in. I'm definitely not confident in a um, every week start. But Marvin Jones, six for 128, looking fantastic. Golden Tate, start every week. Eric Ebron, cut him from your team. All right, let's move on. So, waiver wire pickups. My issue with this segment is that my waiver wire pickup is Robbie Anderson. I'm not going to talk about him at all because Chris is going to tell you all about him on this week's Great Debate. Chris, who is your waiver wire pickup? My waiver wire pickup, you know, I've been struggling because I don't want to just choose the guy who's the other part of the Great Debate. I feel like that's kind of a cop-out. Like every week I can just go, oh, just go pick this guy up. 
but it's going to be Marlon Mack. He's only 45% owned right now. So he's available in more than half of leagues, according to or half of Yahoo leagues. I would assume it'd be similar at the other sites as well. But yeah, Marlon Mack, I think he's got to be picked up. Yeah, keep in mind, I'm not trying to cop out of like this waiver wire pickup. Robbie Anderson was someone I added Sunday morning in our personal sleeper wire league about 20 minutes before kickoff because I was like, oh God, I forgot to set a lineup. And I saw him and I was like, I've got a good feeling, add, and then he went off. So he truly would be my waiver wire pickup, but then I realize your great debate show, you guys get way more depth than I would, and you know so much more than me. So listen to that. That's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. You know math. I don't. So, <laughs> All right. So let's get no buy low, sell high. Chris, are you ready? Absolutely. Who is your buy low? And my buy low is someone who I think you're finally going to be able to maybe get – at the price you won't have to pay for where he was going, and that's Devonta Freeman. The last three weeks, he was 9 for 68, 12 for 72, and 12 for 41. So his opportunity hasn't been there like it usually is. But I think with his production, especially that he had the buy in week four, it's been a long time since owners have seen him do anything. I think you can probably get him for a pretty good price. I like it. My buy low is a little weird, and you're probably going to hate it, it's kind of dumb. But my buy low is going to be Devontae Parker. Now hear me out. Before you make fun of me, hear me out. Hasn't played in a few weeks. Miami looks terrible. You can probably get Parker for Cole Beasley right now because no one really wants him. He's getting zeros in your bench. He could be a free agent for all I know in your league. If you can get him, if he's back on the field next week, he's an automatic wide receiver too. He is the arguably the best receiver on Miami. I know Landry has the best hand, so he gets the most targets. But Parker is a playmaker, and if Cutler comes back this year, he's going to be another number one for Miami, and he'll put up numbers for you. I could see, especially in PPR, average 14 points a week. So he'll be a solid to have to have. I don't care. (laughs) He'll be a solid to have. Jarvis Landry is the number one wide receiver there. Yeah, I know. I said that. Yeah, even when Parker comes back and Cutler comes back, it's not going to be Parker. It's still Cutler. I said 14 points. Jarvis Landry gets more in PPR. I said Parker has the talent to be the number one, but Landry will get targeted more because he has better hands. Mm, sounded like you were saying Parker will be the wide receiver one going forward. Nope, I just think he's a really good wide receiver too. About 14 points a week in PPR. About 10 standard. And I think as a wide receiver two or three for your team, and you can get him for Cole Beasley, who is probably on your waiver wire right now. I don't know. Just Devontae Parker never excites me enough to want to play him. I don't know. He excites me this year because I've been a huge, like, not for Parker at all. But I don't know. When he's healthy, I feel like he's he's going to be really good. And after essentially four weeks of him being out because he got hurt at the Tennessee game, this is going to be, like, the opportune time to buy him, especially with bye weeks coming up. He's going to be a great filler for you. Could be. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm saying for a buy low, you can literally pick someone up off the waiver wire and probably trade them away to get Devonta Parker. Yeah, that's probably true. All right, who is your sell high? Will Fuller. What? Yep. My sell my high, high is Will Fuller. And yeah, I, it's, it's, <laughs> we feel differently there. He can't keep up a seven touchdown and four game pace. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, I know he's had four really, really good games in a row, but that pace is just impossible to sustain. I do think he'll likely have another good week this week against Indianapolis. But then he's got the Rams, Cardinals, and Ravens, and none of those are cupcake defenses. So I think, you know, right now you can probably get an RB1 for Will Fuller, which is pretty crazy to think about. Even You can probably get as much for Will Fuller as you could for DeAndre Hopkins. I mean... That's how much people are valuing this guy on their team. Yeah, I wouldn't buy him that high. <laughs> like, that's a little absurd, but uh, I, I could see it, I guess, in certain circles. Yeah, um, it, it's to the point, like, if you had Hopkins and Fuller and somebody was like, I'll give you, you know, this running back for either one of these two guys, they'd be okay with – some people might be okay with trading Hopkins to keep Fuller. And I think Fuller, you yeah, need to trade him that. at his peak. I wouldn't do that. But I'm talking like if you – if I – if someone said, hey, I'll give you Fuller for Jordy Nelson, I'd consider it. Or I'd do it, especially with Aaron Rodgers gone. If they said it for Brandon Cooks, I'd do it. Um Michael Thomas, I'd do it. I wouldn't do it for Michael Thomas. I would. I, don't, I just don't like him. 
Yeah, all right. Yeah, I just don't think he can keep this pace up. Seven touchdowns on, what is it, 13 catches? That's just not going to continue. Yeah, he'll probably have some more good games, but just you. I don't think you'll be able to sell him higher than what you can get for him right now. All right. So my sell high is going to have to be Jarek McKinnon. Now, he's going into a bye week, so this might not be the week to sell him. It could be coming back. But once he's back, he has Washington, the Rams, who actually, you know, really good defense. Detroit, decent run defense. Atlanta, decent run defense. Carolina, Cincinnati, Green Bay's, don't be scared of Green Bay. But it doesn't have the easiest end of the season. And I'm not the most confident in McKinnon as a player. To be completely honest, I still like Latavius Murray. I still see the teams kind of splitting the carries down the line, especially if they think they have a playoff run on their hands. So McKinnon would be my sell high. He's coming off his third 30-point game in PPR or 30-point-plus game in PPR in the last four games, and he's being valued as a solid, solid number two running back. And he actually might be someone that, I mean, I value Will Fuller high. You might be able to get a trade, Will Fuller, for Jack McKinnon if a person needs a running back. And I Nick, think that'd be great. Nick and I made a trade in the Dash Radio League this week. I gave him T.Y. Hilton for Jerk McKinnon. You took Jerk McKinnon for T.Y.? Yep. yep. Ugh. Traded away Hilton for McKinnon. And it was I, – I really needed a running back so I didn't have to play Frank Gore this week. Yeah, well, but see, even that, then, that, that, that situation, though, it's like I'm not high on T.Y. at all either because T.Y. doesn't have a good quarterback. Well, he's percent. Right, right. And, he's and, that, okay. and that's, why, that's why I was That's okay like a fair it. trade. That's not even yeah. a sell high. It's just a fair trade. No, I wasn't saying I sold high or anything. Yeah, that's that's a fair trade. Yeah. I, I just think you could sell high on McKinnon just because his production has been pretty crazy the last few weeks, but they're still working Latavius Murray into it. And I feel like that, especially down the stretch, if they think they have a playoff run, they're probably going to pull the reins back on him a bit. Well, I mean, Latavius Murray had five more carries than Derek McKinnon did this week, but he still got 14 carries. He still rushed for more yards than Murray did, I believe, and I can vet that real quick. But, I mean, my eyes, if I was going to trade McKinnon right now, I could probably get Marlon Mack off someone and something else. So that's my sell high. So, folks, that's it for today's show. Thank you for listening. Please head over to sleeperwire.com for all the latest news, rankings, podcasts. You can submit questions right there on the site. We have live shows on Sundays. We have mailbags on Wednesdays, which are always fun. You can find us on Twitter at Sleeper Wire Show. I'm on there at Seymour Sleeper Wire. You can also find us on the SleeperBot app at Professor Chris and at Max SW. And then on the Fantasy Life at Professor Chris as well. And also, today's show was sponsored by 3rd and Nevin's Watches, luxury timepieces that make a statement, clean, sophisticated designs that are wearable in all situations, the highest quality craftsmanship, incredibly affordable prices. Visit 3rdandnevins.com and order today. All right. I'm Max. He's Professor Chris. We are Sleeper Wire. Thank you all for listening. Have a great night. Peace. and multi-time, multi-league, multi-year champions. Listen to the Sleeper Wire Show every Friday, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern on Dash Talk.